Good morning, YouTube. I was playing around with the OpenELEC version of Kodi or XBMC. One of the things I noticed that was missing in OpenELEC was a way to edit your config.txt file, which has all the Raspberry Pi system parameters in it, like your overclocking and also your MPEG decoder keys, which I showed you in an earlier video. But I found uh, where to get something like that. It's in a, an add-on package called Leopold's Repository. And there's two ways you can get to it. One is you could go to the file manager and do the add source. Uh, and I'll put a link to the repository in the video description. What I've done is I've I downloaded the zip file to uh, one of my PCs, so I can just install from zip file directly. So I've just made a uh, Kodi shared folder here. The repository is called xbmc.repo.leopold.zip and you just install from zip file and then you can see at the bottom there it says Leopold's add-ons enabled. Then you do git add-ons and if you go into there the one you want is services and it's called the OpenELEC Raspberry Pi config add-on and you can see I've already enabled mine uh, if you haven't enabled it you go to this screen you enable it so that's the uh, services add-on you go uh, to programs this is where it gets a little bit tricky here because the open elect configuration is available both in the programs but that also shows up under the system menu but the one we want is the open elect Raspberry Pi config and that only shows up under programs. You got to go to the right place to get to that but then you get this screen if you click that and you can set your overclocking here. You have your video options. Uh, you have some other uh, settings here. Memory uh, and then this is where your license keys can be added here. You can scroll down add your license keys directly and the settings uh, he just has a debug mode but the big one here is this uh, overclocking setting there so the default is disabled which that basically sets you at 700 megahertz and all the uh, other parameters are default then there's a custom setting which you can Put any number you want in. That one you probably want to stay away from unless you really know what you're doing. But then these are the pre-selected, if you will, overclocked settings starting from modest. That one's usually pretty safe. Uh, then there's a medium overclocking. Then there's the high setting, 950. And then there's the turbo setting, which is a thousand megahertz on the CPU and 500 on the core and memory. What is recommended if you want to play with this, start with the default setting and get a baseline of what sort of temperature you're seeing. And I'll show you that in a, another part of the video. Run the system for maybe 30 minutes to an hour uh, on a heavy workload, a live TV show or a 1080p video, something that maxes the CPU out and check the CPU temperature. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then you can go up and do the same test on the modest setting and see what kind of increase in temperature you get and you might also want to check your uh, USB current and voltage if you don't have kind of a marginal power supply situation then you can try that with the medium settings you know if that looks okay and you're willing to try the high setting try that if that all looks good 
You can try the turbo setting. When you change those settings, this tool will automatically write whatever you changed to the config.txt file and then it gives you a uh, reboot screen. It'll uh, give you 10 seconds to cancel the changes if you don't want to reboot, if you accidentally type something wrong. And if it's okay, in 10 seconds it reboots and you come back up to your system. If you go to your system info and down to the hardware setting, you can see here I'm running the 1000 megahertz. I have the turbo mode enabled. You can just see where I was running at 1000 megahertz, but the CPU wasn't busy. So after a short period of time, it drops down to 700 megahertz. It drops back to the default setting. So that, that uh, uh, turbo boost mode seems to work pretty well. It speeds the CPU up when it needs to, and then it, it ramps it down when it's not needed. So I'll show you uh, one or two of the uh, temperature runs I did. Uh, right now you can see, you can definitely see how the, the CPU temperature is falling now that we're down at 700 megahertz. So it's pretty sensitive and your temperatures will depend on, you know, what kind of airflow you have over your Raspberry Pi. You know, the individual board, you know, might run hotter or cooler. Uh, the case you have and whether you have heat sinks or not. I have the Flerk metal case, which I purchased specifically because it's a, you know, the case actually contacts the CPU and makes a, you know, a direct thermal contact from the from the CPU directly to the case. I wanted to have a passively cooled system and still be able to run, you know, reasonably fast. I think this thousand megahertz, it it seems to be you know, fast enough to do everything you need to. You can always be faster, but, you know, what's the point of shortening your hardware life, so. And there's my screensaver, so, uh, yeah, I'll show you what these look like uh, in action, how to test out your, your overclocking, but that uh, is Leopold's OpenELEC Raspberry Pi Config add-on. This is what I was mentioning about the Force Turbo, the name of the variable is actually Force Turbo. And I guess what that means is it forces turbo mode or the fastest speed all the time. If you check that box, you disable the dynamic overclocking or the turbo mode. And it just runs at the fastest speed all the time. So I noticed that uh, RAS BMC actually forces turbo mode. If you set 800 or 900 megahertz, it runs that speed all the time, unless you put this force turbo equal to zero, is what that setting is. So I guess the RAS BMC has force turbo set to one by default. The OpenELEC has force turbo set to zero by default. So that's a subtle difference between the two. I, I kind of like these settings. They, they seem to work pretty well. I've been running for a couple of weeks now on the 1000 megahertz turbo setting. And it seems to be very stable. It runs. I get up only to, I think, 108 or 110 Fahrenheit now that I've opened up the case. And that seems to be quite uh, quite reasonable. It's not uh, hot, and I've let it run several hours without any issues. So check out Leopold's OpenELEC Raspberry Pi Config add-on.